Good Friday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. It is a calm, cool, and quiet morning. A little bit on the foggy side out there for today, but otherwise, no major problems being seen with visibility. We're going to continue to see some very nice conditions in the next couple of days, especially if you have any plans for outdoors, but we're also going to be seeing some very warm conditions as well. Very warm, in fact, possibly even some record-breaking temperatures into the next couple of days, so get set to get some very warm conditions out across much of the Mid-South area. Rest of the day today, again, shouldn't be too much to worry about, but again, the possibility of a few showers, maybe even a thunderstorm coming our way as we get into the weekend. That's going to be the main thing that we're going to be taking a look at, but beyond that, not really too much expected across much of the area. Considering, again, we should be into the 70s and lower 70s at that, we could be seeing some record-breaking temperatures as we get into and around the area of about Saturday and then Sunday, better chances of some more showers and thunderstorms heading our direction. But we'll be talking a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Facebook and also on Periscope and Twitter. Facebook users are now just starting to sign in. So thanks to everybody for stopping by and keeping an eye on things. It is Friday morning. It is Friday the 13th. Why that's a problem, I'm really not entirely too sure about that. But if you have any questions about the forecast, join me on Periscope and Twitter or drop your comments and your questions into the forecast or into the comments section. And I'll be glad to find out a little bit more about what you're seeing out there. Currently in the Mid-South, we don't have a lot going on. It's a beautiful morning, lots of blue skies. Again, some haze around the horizon due to usual amounts of pollution, which is what happens when the atmosphere settles down in the middle of the night. So not that much to worry about here. Few clouds going to be popping up from time to time, but that's going to be about it. More of our weather bug cameras available in the uh, white letters and the black bar there, wrg.com slash webcams if you'd like to take a view of what's going on across much of the Mid-South. Currently on radar, we have little, if anything, going on across the entire area. Very dry conditions and will continue to be that way throughout the rest of the day. So if you have any plans for outdoors, go ahead and keep them for today. Just not really seeing too much of anything excuse me, across the Mid-South into the rest of the day today. So pretty quiet out there and chances of rain again about 48 hours into the future, but we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. It is Friday the 13th. If you have, again, just uh, started off watching us and have any questions about the forecast, please drop them into the comments section. We'd love to know more about what it is that you would like to be able to see out there. And as of right now, and I'm not too sure why this is not showing up properly, but give me about two seconds. There we go. All right, Friday the 13th for today. And again, if you are going up in any tall buildings and find yourself on the 14th floor, sorry about that, but you're actually on the 13th floor, believe it or not. So again, even kids that I talk to in middle school understand the difference about counting 11, 12, 13, 14, believe it or not. So something to think about there. More of my camera pictures from around the Mid-South. And thanks to everybody else for popping some in there on Instagram. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. National Hurricane Center, we are tracking a couple of things out there. Number one is going to be a uh, possible disturbance making its way into the Caribbean. Exactly what the Puerto Rico does not need at this point in time. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Ophelia is a hurricane. And as of right now, it's going to be interesting to see where and how this begins to move because over the next couple of days, it's going to be aiming possibly as a post-tropical hurricane making its way toward the southwest coast of Ireland in the next few days. That's going to be interesting in and of itself. And then maybe it's a tropical storm right over Scotland as we go into early next week. So this is no threat to the United States, but if you have any plans to travel overseas, uh, anywhere around the British Isles taking a fall vacation or something like that. This could be something that could cause a lot of travel delays out there, so please keep that in mind. And as of right now, the computer model's in pretty good agreement about everything. We're just not seeing, again, a lot of major changes out here with anything like this. So Ophelia, way out into the eastern side of the Atlantic and not a threat to us here in the Mid-South or throughout the Gulf of Mexico. So just not really seeing too much of anything else out there for right now. Uh, Renee Vaughn Homewood, welcome to the show, and thanks for stopping on by. Uh, Nikki Lynn Shepard, also thank you very much for stopping by the show for this morning. Let's take a look and see what's going on out there when it comes to the other disturbance, again, coming on through. And this one will be, again, not exactly really much of any good news to around the area of the storm systems uh, into and around portions of the Caribbean. This is where we could see, again, some minor problems. Hopefully it doesn't look like too much of a threat, but if this 
this is a, another problem to Puerto Rico. This is something that we really should be monitoring and keeping a very close eye on. This storm, again, could be, again, making its way right over Puerto Rico, or at least very close to it, according to the computer models on here. This is where we could see, again, the major problems coming on through. Hopefully, it takes more of that northerly course heading away from Puerto Rico in the next couple of days, but the computer model is still showing a potential threat to the island, again, of rain and wind. It's very lopsided right now. It could be a threat into the next couple of days for that particular area, but as of right now, it is decently far out into the Atlantic. And as of right now, the other good news is that it only appears to have about a 30% chance of developing, so that's good news, but unfortunately, there is still that potential of it developing, so We'll be watching this throughout the course of the next few mornings and see how that goes out there. So keep it tuned. If you're heading for the Gulf, Florida, or the East Coast, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. Linda Story, welcome to the show. And Marilyn Pang tuning in on Facebook for this morning. Forgot to mention, if you've never been here before, forecast information in the blue bar right there, social media information here, and also up there above the website. And that's where you can get all of our weather information as well. Currently in the Mid-South, just showed you our Germantown camera a little while ago. Let's drop down to Heidelberg Elementary in around Clarksdale and show you that we have tons of sunshine out there, some blue skies and the leaves finally starting to turn green around Heidelberg Elementary. So a beautiful start to Friday. Again, more of our weather bug cameras available at wreg.com slash webcams for more. Here in the Mid-South area, well, unfortunately, that's not what I was planning on uh, using. Give me two shakes here. This is a really cool website to use if you have never seen this before. This is a good website when it comes to all sorts of unique and interesting weather information, whether it's smoke and visibility, whether it's temperatures or uh, road temperature conditions out there as well. Uh, great opportunity for you to use this to help keep you safe and to keep an eye as to what's going on out there. Temperatures in the Mid-South, there's a better number for you looking around the area. Mid to upper 50s around the area close to Lakeland. Uh, very cool across much of the area, but that's about the only 50s that we have left over. Although we do have one at the Experiment Station in Jackson, Tennessee, showing up at 59 degrees as well. Everybody else back into the 60s. Uh, 55 degrees, where is that? Bethel in Arkansas, and also in Clay County in Nobel, picking up a little bit of some light activities at this point in time. So that, again, is not really too much to worry about for temperatures out there. It's going to be a very warm day coming up. We'll talk about that in just a little while. Relatively quiet across much of the United States, although some problems with the wildfires and very low humidity going on out into California from Northern California all the way down to Los Angeles. Visibility problems, heat, and very low humidity, so not good news for anybody doing anything out of doors, especially with uh, emphysema, lung, asthma, stuff like that. Could be a bit of a problem there. Here in the Mid-South, again, little if anything really to worry about at this point in time. Uh, so far, so good and quiet conditions into around uh, much of the Mid-South out there. Renee Vaughn Homewood, how's it looking for next weekend? Daughter going to a cruise to Progresso and Cozumel. Doesn't look like too much of a problem. We'll take a look at some international weather coming up here in just a little bit. For the next few days, uh, things are decently quiet for right now. High pressure blocking an area of a cold front coming on through. It looks to be arriving as it gets into around about the area of Sunday afternoon. So we do do have some rain in the forecast. Not a lot, no severe weather, so good news on that. We'll take a look at that forecast in just a little bit. Uh, Linda Story, welcome from Houston. Not too sure if that's Mississippi or Texas, but either way, uh, thanks for joining us. If that is Texas, say hello to my uh, cousin Anita, who's a nurse down in one of the hospitals down there, and to my cousin as well. Uh, Rachel in that area. The front coming through again will be making its way into the Mid-South by Sunday afternoon. It doesn't look like a lot. That area of high pressure is going to do a good job of kind of applying the brakes to this thing. So the chances of anything involving rainfall are going to be pretty limited at this point. Just not that much going on. Highs today back in the lower 80s. Temperatures by the time we hit News Channel 3 at 6, right before Friday Night Football, will be back in the mid to upper 70s. Take the jacket along with you because some areas of the Mid-South by the time the games are over with. We'll be back in the lower 60s. Not a lot, but at least a few of them will be. And then low temperatures into tomorrow morning, back into the lower to mid 60s or so. High temperatures on Saturday. Record high for Memphis is 90 degrees. It's a good possibility 
that we could see some record highs tied or broken as we get into the forecast period there. Saturday night, low temperatures, very mild, thanks in part to those winds coming up out of the south, keeping the temperatures up by just a little bit. Rain chances early Saturday night into around northeastern Arkansas. Better possibilities of rainfall throughout the rest of the Mid-South as we go throughout the rest of Sunday. And we're only talking about a 30% chance at best, maybe about 35% here and there. Uh, back to around 40% up around northwest Tennessee. That's going to be about the bulk of it for right now. And temperature's a little bit nicer on Sunday as those winds begin to switch around a little bit as that next front comes on through. So temperatures will be very close to normal. And on Monday, temperatures even nicer. High temperatures on Monday will be back into the mid to upper 60s. So very much on the mild side there. Unfortunately, as we go throughout the course of next week, we're going to jump ahead to Thursday. High temperatures returning to the mid to upper 70s to right around 80 degrees and back in the lower to mid 80s as we head toward next weekend. So we keep getting these little tastes of autumn, but we don't get too much in the way of sustained amount of cool weather out there anytime soon, which would be nice, but it's not happening here anytime across the Mid-South. Currently not seeing anything in the way of severe weather. There is a threat into tomorrow, well to our north into around the Great Plains, Wichita, Kansas, to just about Keokuk, Iowa, uh, well to the southwest of Chicago. Not seeing anything for us at this particular time. As we go toward the day three outlook, this is what it looks like for Sunday. The green conditions indicate where there's a possibility of thunderstorms. And through most of the day on Sunday, it looks like most of the thunderstorm chances roll south and east of us. So it does not look all that great for thunderstorms, mainly rainfall, and at that, just really not picking up uh, all that much. So it doesn't really look like too much of any uh, major concerns out across much of the area for thunderstorms. Good news on that. Tonight, a super bright pass of the International Space Station rising at about 718 from the northwest and then moving right between the Big Dipper and between the North Star and the horizon. Should be able to pick this up very well if the skies are clear enough. And then going toward the northeast. So rising in the northwest, going toward the northeast and disappearing about the time it hits Andromeda and close to the great square of Pegasus. And this should be a very bright pass, very easy to pick up. We'll post reminders about this as we go toward later on tonight. A very dim pass of Tiangong-1, the abandoned portion of the Chinese space station. It'll be deorbited in the course of the next several months. You may need binoculars to see this one. It'll be very faint, rising at about uh, 652 in the northwest horizon and again going toward the northeast setting around Perseus, but the ISS will be very bright. That's one of two passes for the ISS. The next one will be on the next orbit right after that, and it will be very bright, but it'll also be very brief. It'll barely get above Earth's shadow, or above the curve of the Earth before it hits Earth's shadow, and then it'll disappear on the next pass. So that's two passes of the International Space Station later on tonight, so a great opportunity to see more about that. More information from heavens-above.com. 7.36 tonight, an iridium flare will happen just around the North Star, heading down toward the northern horizon, so you should be able to see at least a little bit of that dropping its way on through the area. These are satellite reflections from the solar panel array on the Iridium satellites, so named by the corporation that put them up there, and these will get very bright very slowly within about 10 to 15 seconds, get to their maximum brightness, and then fade away again all within 20 to 30 seconds. And you should be able to see that right around 7.36 later on tonight. Again, heavens hyphen above, a great place to go to. And thanks to, again, anybody who wants to take a look at this, a very neat website to take a peek at there. More information available from my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Some of you uh, on the cap on there right there, firecapin202, welcome to the show on Instagram, or pardon me, on Periscope and Twitter, and also on my Facebook page. Happy again Friday the 13th. Happy Irrational Fear of a Number Day. It's the 13th floor. When you call it the 14th, you're not fooling anybody. Sorry about that. And more of my pictures from around the Mid-South and Points Beyond and forecast graphic available on Instagram.com slash AonicWREG3. More information about the forecast, you can catch the seven-day available here at WREG.com slash weather. And again, the only chance of anything 
involving the possibility of rainfall in the Mid-South. Uh, Bethany Bircher, good morning to my goddaughter on Facebook. Thanks for joining us from Emporia. I'm assuming this morning, not back in Topeka at this time. Uh, as of right now, again, a bit cooler toward Monday, nicer into next week, but still warming back up again, and more of this available at wrg.com slash weather. If you'd like to pick up my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend, but you can't watch on air or online, listen to us on the radio. My complete forecast available on the East Arc Arkansas Broadcast Network, Oldies 102.3 and Country 92.5. Ah, back in Topeka. Okay, very cool. Fall break for Emporia State. Very glad to hear everybody say hello to my uh, goddaughter back in Topeka, not Emporia, but Emporia State, great place to go to. Uh, also been there on occasions from a long time ago. If you'd like to know more about what's going on with the forecast, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day. We've got plenty more coming up on News Channel 3 at noon. And, of course, Tim Simpson will have your forecast into Friday Night Football and beyond later on tonight. I'll have a detailed forecast for you coming up bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That'll be starting tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 at 6 a.m. and throughout the rest of the weekend as well. So stay tuned for more there. Live and direct from News Channel Channel 3 in downtown Memphis, right along the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Contact me at that blue bar up there, austin.onik at wreg.com. Thanks to everybody for stopping by, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend for further updates.